What's up, guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, of course, the Skyrender. And yes, I actually reverted back to the old intro because you people actually asked for it, and I guess, you know, really, in, in the end, it's what you guys prefer, and the intro means so little for me, since it only is like 10 seconds of material, so I get that, and we're back to the previous one. Now, I will find something in the future, but until I fight, figure that out, so we got to stick with this, because this is actually a really nice one. Anyway, today we have a battle against Blue Sea, the very same person I nominated for the fucker rap, so make sure to check this guy out. He is down below, of course, linked, and he's a pocket room himself, of course, and uh, he is, in general, a very good battler, and he's focusing a lot on NG right now, so I'm sure you will like his stuff. Now, going into this battle, we have a Valplume, Quagsire, Archeops, Sandsledge, Wigglytuff, and Magmortar. Uh, I myself is using... Um, the Machoke, Mr. Mime, Choice Badded, Dudro, Simisir, Ariados, and Raichu. Now, Ariados is the famous Niffenberg set, which is Agility, Scopelands, um, and, you know, people like this set. Uh, it's got a legendary status, which is really, really cool, considering how hard I have time using it really good. And uh, this is one of the few times where I'll actually try to use it properly, and I should try to do this more often. It just, it needs the situations at hand to kind of pull off. And it's something that works from time to time, but not often. So anyway, going to see his team here, I guess his best lead is the up. so I decided here to leave it my Machoke as a death father and hurt something really bad with confusion. So, with all this, my guys, let's go. So right, going in here, like I said, I did produce Archeop, so he's actually going to live up with Kano, the Magmortar, and that is actually kind of fine. Most people forget that Machoke is actually much, much better, especially defensively, than it is on its defensive side. So I felt really safe staying in there, not really predicting overheat, I felt that that was kind of overdoing it. But at the same time, you know, that is a really good move to go for, and Dynamic Punch will do a good chunk of damage here. Um, obviously not close to killing him, but um, at the same time, he needs to go for another overheat to, of course, kill me. Now, he do decide to switch out here. Uh, and I decided to go for a Mega Kick, or as one would call it, um, a Fist Punch, or a Feet Punch, or something like that, because he's punching that damn thing. Now, obviously, there is not a whole lot happening there, and uh, I decided here that I need to go for another Punch. Like I said before, I really need to, uh, to some extent and fashion, really, really make sure that um, Machoke falls and basically dent the things it needs to dent. Now, he's gonna go for a Scold, and very, very lucky for me, of course, it's not burning me. As you guys can see, there is not a whole lot of damaging happening there. And that is because of the massive special defense that Machoke do pack with the Violite. So I'll go for another Dynamic Punch, and it's not close to killing him, sadly. Uh, even though it's a crit, but um, I am so lucky here that he hurts himself with Confusion, and that's the Quagsire gone. So that is actually really important, because Quagsire is probably the only thing standing up to Ariados if I pull off that, uh, <laughs> that setup. So he's gonna freeze my Violet, of course, with Wigglytuff, and there's no reason for me of switching out, and Wigglytuff actually outspeeds, uh, which probably was very likely, I didn't really think about that, but, yo, know, Machoke is finally gonna fall, and, um, obviously, Double Edge not doing a whole lot of recall on that Pokemon, of course, so I'm gonna leave with the Mithran Drill, which is the choice, Bandit Dudrio, and go for my own set of Double Edge. Now, here's the thing. I saw the Archeops, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna beat it to the defeatist range. Awesome! Awesome! But he packs the Citrus Berry, so now it's way dangerous again, and I can't see him because he outspeeds. Even with the defeatist range, I probably couldn't survive it, but that really forced me out. I don't want to risk that just yet. So I'm gonna go into Mulnir, and basically, I'm, I mean, I'm not foddering it. Uh, it's not the point, but uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't play this thing differently, and I think he suspected me to either be timid or anything like that, or at least outspeed, which is obviously what I don't do, and I'm actually a physical set, so I went for the knockoff, not doing a whole lot of damage, and now I know it's probably adamant, which means I probably will outspeed since I am timid, so I have to save that Pokemon for later, I'm gonna go to Zizdag. Now, Zizdag is, um, it, it is, it works sometimes, but this is not the matchup it's gonna work against. Now, Flamethrower is the stronger move than Grass Knot due to Sand Slash not weighing a whole lot, and it's close of killing it, it's close, but it's not enough, and my poor, poor, poor Monferno is gonna fall, and that sucks. Uh, yeah, I have Vacuum Wave and stuff like that, and that's it really is funny to use. So anyway, I gotta go to Purple Rain, which is a feeble Mr. Mime, because I feel that that's awkward enough, so... <laughs> 
Gotta go for Psychic, finish him off. There is no way in hell he's gonna pull that thing differently. And he's, I do believe, he's gonna go to his Wigglytuff now. And uh, the Smash. That is a Wigglytuff if I've ever heard one. So I'm basically here going to go for some damage and then basically fall. And then try to go for Ariados and pull that sweet, sweet sweep off. And there's a Jarrah Ball, which I actually did not expect. That is pretty intimidating, to be honest. And of course, that kills Mr. Mime because he has the defenses of a Pikachu, so it's just. There is no debating that, really. So, and here comes Nifberg. And now, I will say this had it gone for a Jarrah Ball here while I set up with Agility, that would have turned pretty, pretty ugly. And uh, to be completely honest here, but I do pull off the Agility, so now I speed his whole remaining team like there is no way he can outspeed me so cross poison is gonna beat off them gonna beat off it's gonna kill off them <laughs> like water the cannon <laughs> gonna beat that off no <laughs> so anyway here's a rage flyer and the night slash will of course score a crit due to my scope lens and the high crit ratio is a 50 percent chance of actually pulling through plus sniper you're going down there is no way you're taking that next pokemon up is the flu flora funa yeah i'm I'm pulling that off just fine. And the Mega Horn will do a good chunk of damage. Had it been a crit, it would have killed it. But at that range, I felt that, alright, I can probably go for a cross poison and score a crit there and it will die. Not risking the miss, but obviously, I just want so many crits in as possible. But Nifberg kind of fails me here and just go for regular damage. Now, with that, does still a lot, but <laughs> hardly enough. And of course, the Vault Bloom can't really do anything and it's just waiting to die. I don't feel really sorry about Blues if it is. Because, like I said there, Nifberg is a set that hardly, hardly works, but when it works, there is just no stopping it. It's a good late game sweeper, and he definitely did not have the power to pull it off. His best answer to this was the Ariados, or the Archeops, and, um, well, that thing fall against this thing, didn't it? So yeah, we do win here 4-0, and it's a very, very straightforward match. And uh, it's very likely there in the beginning when um, he actually switched out his Quagsire uh, or switched out his Magmortar for Quagsire that things fell apart for him because I think Overheat would have killed my, um, ooh, my Machoke at that range. I truly believe so. And he put himself in a very tough position by doing so. And the result speaks thereafter. There was really nothing stopping Ariados once I pulled off the agility. Um, Quagsire might have been very likely to deal with my Ariados and Skull burning it eventually would have been quite crucial. I would not even go for that if Quagsire was around. So that's that's the issue that is Ariados. There is really, if you have a defensive wall, it could very likely win the matchup because Ariados don't have that power behind it. It does strike hard, but not hard enough. And that is also one thing I want to reach out when it comes to Ariados and just really, really comparing it to the likes of Scallipede. The thing that separates them is the speed, but everything besides that they actually share a similar stat. So they have a. If Ariados have speed boost, I actually think that that Pokemon would have been a lot, lot more dangerous. But it is pretty darn slow, and therefore we have agility on it, uh, which makes it. It makes it quite intimidating in NU, but it's. Um, NU is probably the, as far as it will go due to its slow speed and uh, pretty much lacking move pool, really. But of course, it's still it's a fun set to use. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank Blue for the spell, of course. Make sure to check this guy out, like I said there. And yeah, with all that said, remember, the sky is limited. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.